Hi there, I'm Mike Thornton. This video tutorial forms part of the process of setting up the free Room EQ wizard ready to take measurements of each of the speakers in my 7.1.4 Dolby Atmos system in my studio. Then to turn those measurements into a set of EQ filters and then finally transfer that data into the Dabman software to set up the SPQ card in my interface. The first thing we need to do is to download the free Room EQ Wizard software. Now, when you search for REW, you'll almost certainly be taken to the main homepage for the Room EQ Wizard software. However, what you may miss in the small print is that the last version here is version 5.19, which was last revised on the 29th of August 2018. However, all is not lost. The next sentence here explains that beta versions are now available from AR Nirvana and help is also available on their dedicated REW support forum. Now, I strongly recommend that this is where you go to get the latest version of Ruby Q Wizard, which at this time is version 5.2 RC12. You will have to register with AR Nirvana before you can download the software. But once your membership has been approved, then you'll be able to download the appropriate version for your computer platform. And they've got options to cover Mac OS, Windows 32-bit, Windows 64-bit, or Linux. Before you start to install Room EQ Wizard, we do recommend that you get the UMIK-1 USB mic. And it's plugged into your computer and that you have already downloaded the calibration files. You get these calibration files from the UMIK-1 USB mic page on the Mini DSP website. The mic has a label with the serial number on it near the bottom, and that's what you need to enter into the appropriate boxes on the Mini DSP mic web page. When you've done that, you'll get two different files. One is for when you point the mic at the sound source, and the other is where the sound source is at 90 degrees to the axis of the microphone. I choose to use the 90 degree file, so I don't need to keep pointing the mic at each of the speakers when it came to the measurement stage. Now that you've got the appropriate installer, the mic and the calibration files, you're ready to set up and install Room EQ Wizard. When you install the software, as well as the usual windows about where to install the software, agree to the license, REW will ask you how much memory to allocate to the app. And just to be safe, I went with one up from the default of one gig and chose 1.5 gig. Next, if the USB mic is connected to your computer, the installer will ask you if you want to use it for measurements. Click yes. Then you'll be asked for the calibration file. Navigate your way to where the calibration files that you downloaded earlier are situated and select the one you want to use. As I said before, I recommend that you use the 90 degree file. Once it's loaded, then you can click on the close button on the calibration data window and you'll be ready to get started. When you run Room EQ Wizard for the first time, you'll get a blank window with a toolbar of icons across the top. Click on the Preferences icon on the right-hand side and the Room EQ Wizards Preferences window will open on the Sound Card tab. You will see that the input side is already set up to use the USB measurement mic because it had been plugged in before we started the installation process. On macOS systems, the output side defaults to the default device as set in the Sound tab on the macOS system preferences. This works for me as I've chosen to use REW on my laptop rather than trying to run it on my studio computer and figure out a way of how to route the audio around my monitoring. In fact, as part of my studio setup, I already have an audio cable from my laptop into an analog input on my Matrix Studio. I've then created a simple Dolby Atmos test session and through that I'm able to route the audio from my laptop into each speaker output one by one using hard routing and not using any panning. Whilst we're in the REW preferences, 
The Cal file tabs is where you can add the calibration files if you didn't happen to have the USB measurement mic plugged in or the calibration files ready when you installed Room EQ Wizard. And just one final note before we get on to the next stage. For each stage in this process, I'm going to show you what we do for one speaker. You'll then need to repeat it for each individual speaker in your particular system. The next thing we need to do is to set up a reference level. This is not necessarily the reference level for your system, but it kind of should be close to it so that you're checking the speaker at the optimum sound pressure level. In my case, for my system, because I've got a relatively small room, I've chosen 78 dB SPL. To set the reference level, we need to click on the SPL meter button to open up the SPL meter and also click on the generator so that we can generate pink noise to provide us a reference level before we get on to the measurement stage. So in the generator, select pink random noise and select the speaker cal option. Leave the output set to the default minus 12 dBFS and press the play button. That'll set the generator going, producing pink noise. And now what we need to do is to adjust the level going into each speaker. Now that may be a volume control on the front of an amp or the level control on the rear of an active speaker. But you need to adjust it until the SPL meter hits your target level within around 1 dB. Once that's done, you can hit the stop button on the generator and then close the SPL meter and generator windows. At this point, you've now got the software downloaded, installed, set up, the microphone and routing is all set, and now you're ready to take the measurements. You'll find much more information on this and the other stages of the process on Production Expert. See you again soon.